everyone and welcome to Watercolor Wednesdays. Today I'm going to go over how to compose a themed watercolor page based on colors. These are really fun to make and to me they're the equivalent to doing warm-up sketches before a drawing session. So here's first the list of all the supplies that you will need. There are a few more and I will go over them shortly. First, we have an assortment of permanent black pens of various sizes. I usually use the larger ones for the outlines and the thinner ones for the detailing. For my brushes, I have a few different size mop brushes. These are natural squirrel hair, so they hold a lot of water, which makes them really nice for washes. I also have a few different synthetic round brushes. A natural hair dagger brush for painting leaves and petals. I don't always use all the brushes but I like to have options. Next I have some masking tape and some masking fluid. For the masking fluid I'll be using a silicone brush. This way it's really easy to take off the excess masking fluid after you're done. I also have a pencil and an eraser so when picking my colors, I like to use my color swatches. I have all the colors that I have on these swatch cards for both my Holbein and Windsor Newton watercolors. Today, I'll be using Q Violet, a Praline Maroon from Holbein, and Crimson Lake from Windsor Newton. When picking my colors, I like to pick colors that complement each other and for this exercise are in the same family. You can easily choose colors that are analogous or follow other color palette schemes. When planning out my page, I like to have a space for the color swatches, then a few different size and shapes for the other ones. How many and what configuration you use is up to you. I'm going to start by painting in the swatches, starting with a lot of pigment at the top and using my mop brush to draw down the color to create a gradient. For this next space, I'm going to use my silicone brush and the masking fluid to draw on a loose flower and bud. When using the masking fluid, it is a little bit tricky and it takes a little bit of getting used to. I prefer to use a silicone brush over a bristled brush because it gets really difficult to pull off the excess dried masking fluid once you're done. I have seen tricks where people will coat their bristles with a soap first and then it becomes a little bit easier to pull off the masking fluid but I haven't found this to be very helpful so I like to stick using to um, a, a silicone brush. And you can get these silicone brushes in various different sizes and shapes as well. So you can do fine detailing work as well but you can use other tools like toothpicks, cotton buds, paper clips or anything that you can get a nice fine point in, depending on what you're trying to achieve. While that is drying, I'm going to move on to another space and using my permanent pens, draw a few flowers. When choosing your subject matter, you can choose anything you like or something that you're working on or are wanting to get better at when rendering. I find these kinds of pages really good practice for repetitive kind of drawing. So for example, if you're focusing on drawing florals, then doing something like this and doing a full page of just florals is a very nice, pleasant way of practicing while still making a page that actually looks very appealing to look at.
So once I'm happy with the drawing and the amount of detail with the black pen, I'm going to start to lay down my colors very, very loosely. I'm not trying to stay in the lines, but I'm, I'm starting with my lighter color first. So I'm starting with the permanent pink and just laying down a thin layer of that first. And before the paint dries and before the water evaporates, I'll start to mix in the darker colors as well, thus adding a little bit of blending, but uh, it also adds some dimension. But once I start to add the much darker, darker colors like the, the, the Q Violet, I'm going to wait for this first layer to dry before adding that so that you get a lot more dramatic uh, shades and uh, highlights. So now that my masking fluid is dry, I'm going to start laying down a wash of color. So I'm using the Q Violet first. And again, you can mix and match these colors and you can go back and forth starting light to dark or dark to light just to practice and figure out what um, different things that you can do with these colors and techniques. These pages are a great way to practice with different intensities of colors, different amounts of water when you're painting, and it's a great way to practice and just play around and have a little fun with the watercolors. And then from when you use what you learn from these practice pages into your finished pieces. I try to have at least one panel be a landscape. So for this one, I'm using the masking fluid again to make a sun or a moon, depending on your preference. And don't forget, if you ha don't have patience like I don't, you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. For this one, I will start with the lightest color first with a very thin wash and then build up the layers. Once you have painted in the horizon line, using a wet brush, pick up some of the pigment below to create highlights on the water. Now that you have a few panels on the go, you can go back and forth between them, drying, adding, and taking away pigment as you please. And the idea is to create as much visual interest in each panel as possible. So take your time and work in layers. Now I'm happy with the way the background is for the landscape so once it's completely dry I'm going to take off the masking fluid and then using my permanent pen I'm going to draw on some of the details on the horizon line. I repeat this for the other section with the masking fluid. The tool I'm using here to pick up the masking fluid is a natural 
rubber pad so it just makes it easier to pick up the masking fluid once it's dry especially if you've got tiny little bits of masking fluid um, sometimes if you try to take it off with just your finger or your thumb you can smudge especially if you have like any pencil underneath it it can smudge and ruin the and get all muddy so using this pickup pad is really really helpful next panel I want to make a more abstract background so I'm tearing up some masking tape and laying it down. Once done I lay down washes of different colors again varying the intensity and the colors. While that panel is drying, I'm going to work on the last space, where I'm going to draw a butterfly using the permanent pen. Some other ideas for panels could be patterns, mandalas with a color background, or subject matter that applies to the colors that you're using. So once I make sure that all of the paint on that abstract panel is completely dry, I'm going to peel off the masking tape, which is always fun and very, very satisfying. And once that is done, I'm going to take my, my permanent markers and my permanent pens and start drawing a floral uh, leaf pattern on top. Once you're happy with all of your panels, you can start to take off the masking tape and reveal each panel. And again, super, super satisfying to see the clean edges. And once that is all done, your page that is color themed is finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you try this technique on your next project. They're also really good on if you're starting up a really big project that's conceptually quite complicated these are a great way to work out some of the kinks in those ideas so please let me know if you try these and I would be very um, interested to see your attempts have a great day everyone and thanks for watching <music>